finish the hole. It looks like you play with a ball from 1935. <laughs> what is that? Three lakes. Uh... Dude, that is like so dead. Like, do you have another one? Like, that is like. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure this one's fake. No, that that's okay. It's going to be better than this. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's fake twist off. Okay. okay. B-Dog is playing nothing more than a 7-iron again today, and we replaced his Cobra KBS tapered irons with some Shrixen ZX-7 with shafts made for human beings. Today, B-Dog is going to try out the principle of lying zero to break 90. Lying zero is a concept as old as Jack Nicholson himself. It's simple. The hole only begins where your tee shot finishes. After you hit your tee shot, you're lying at that spot for zero shots. Lion zero. Why is it called lion zero? There are two options when trying to break 90. One option is to add one stroke to the par of every hole and play the course as a par 90 course. Remember, par is a social construct. You then calculate the number of shots for green in regulation. Line zero is the same, but you play the course as a par 72 and take that additional shot from every tee shot, so you start the hole on your second shot. Hopefully you realize that advancing the ball any amount over 100 yards toward the hole is perfect in the line zero golf system. It's like bringing a knife to a pillow fight. Come on, Pa, yo, what a fiver. That'll work. That's a worker. Long rough is going to hold it up, but it'll be. It'll... Good shot. Hey, okay, one night eighter. Into the breezer. This should remove a lot of stress on your tee shots when you understand how easy golf is. You can hit any club you want to hit from the tee. Just hit the most comfortable shot, even if it's that yeah, pitching got, wedge. Got Here's got looking at you, how, how, David Duval. How would you play a 420 yard par four differently if you knew that the hole only starts on your second shot? Sit down, bad boy. Oh, what a shot. Good cut, bad boy. Oh, unlucky. Good cut. I think that's not going to reach the rough. We'll be happy there. Just the first two. Oh, she got it. I don't want to I don't want to force you to hit another line because you I could see moving up to the tee. Great shot, perfect. One line four. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's exactly the shot you need. Dude, that's I think it. you've hit that long. Oh no, it's short. That's that's where you want to be if you're not gonna hit the green. I'm fine missing there. Because see players, you only have on this green, you only have about uh, four yards on to the pin and then you've got about eight yards behind it so it's mainly it's about 12 13 yards long and you can't go over if you're over you're dead straight downhill so we're in the pound seats What a strike, dude. Little fader. 
Oh my word. I don't know how he hits a 50 degree that far. Perfect, good. Beautiful. Perfect. Good. Beautiful. Yeah, perfect shot. We, this is the best part. You were lying zero there. So yeah. you were playing a 300 yard par four. But you can say a 300 yard par five. But because you're only 300 away, you could say to your mind, actually, let's turn this one into a par four. You can adjust as you go. Mm. Just stand with your 61st and see how you feel. Once you've taken your stance, take a practice swing behind the ball here. Yo, same stance. How does that feel? Are you going to get that 100 yards? I'm going 56. If you put yourself in a great position off the tee that lets you go for the green with extreme comfort, you must always try your best to take advantage, okay, but understand That's... that it's not the end of the world if you do not hit the green. I... You will find that with the lack of I... self-imposed wow. weird pressure to play like a pro, you will suddenly start hitting the greens and making those pro pars. Oh, man. Why are we teeing up on the right side? What is the reason? I can see the, the fairway. Okay. If you see, if you're teeing up this ball, your angle is where? At the water. At the water, because your angle is actually toward the 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 ice cream bush at the 150 yard marker. Cool. But look how much space you open up when you come this side. Check. Look, look, look. Can you see how much space you have now? Yeah. And you can go nicely at that bush or at the bunker, and you're going to love life. And as always, the, the golf course designer makes you do that. Yeah. So you're falling into his trap. <laughs> By doing this, you avoid his trap. So if you're hitting your seven iron here, right? Yeah. Just at that, you see the bunker closest yeah. to us? Just right in the middle of it, land it in that bunker. Beauty. See there. Now that shot is beautiful. Now that shot from the right hand side is yeah. big trouble. It is a little bit psychological because with these trees on the left, if you tee up on the on the left hand side, you can't really see, you don't feel like you're lined up with the fairway. Even though my shorter club, I'm not going down the fairway anyway. So it's got that mind games going for us there. Well, that's a course designer setting you up for failure. Get Good job. Gonna overcome that guy. Give that man a raise. <laughs> so 230, this is a very tricky one. This is a, a really tasty one. This I, is the one where people are like, I'm gonna hit a hybrid, uh, fairway wood, and they're not confident, they're not really happy. What are you thinking? I wanna hit something that doesn't give me less than 100 in, because I hate that 100 to 70 or 50. 50 to 100 range, I can't stand that shot. So you wanted to go less than 130, guaranteed? Yeah, so probably a 56 would be good. Okay, sounds good. Here's something to remember when you have a long shot that you don't have a club for. If it's nice, play it twice. A lot of people will directly compare the distances of the 7-iron, the wedges, whatever the person in the video hits. The point here is to find your comfortable game. What distances do you like to hit into greens with maximum confidence? Good putt, bad boy. Oh man alive. What a gorgeous putt. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. Oh my word. That's a tree hook. So B-Dog is lying zero here. He's hitting his first shot of the hole. He's going to try what a land this about 24, 25 yards on. He's going to roll up six yards to the pin. He's probably got a 60 degree. He's doing nicely this side. I think he's made three pars. So looking very tasty. Just stay in the process. The process is hit the green, try put it in, stay conscious. There's a shot that could work really nicely. Look at that. Look at that. He's got that for the... The three, okay? He's actually lying one. He's hit one shot there on the break 90 system.
a good one. Okay, B Dog hit a tee shot. I, I completely missed it because I was taking a slash and uh, unfocused. He doesn't know how to use a phone. Gonna, he still has a Nokia 3310. That's a worker. That's a worker. Not a, a little runner. Okay, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'll eat my. Okay, we lie three there, huh? Yeah. All right. Good putt. Great putt. Oh. Went a lot further. That's that's why I was gonna say rather than let's go left side of the tee box. Another key ingredient to breaking 90 is to stop and think for 10 Mississippis. Wow. Shank. That is a tall order. That is, that is tough. This is where the chip and run comes in. What do you have on you? Eight currently. Uh, eight can work or seven. Where are you going? Left of the tree. Yep. It's a nice chip, like your normal chip. Yeah. Just your normal chip, show me a normal chip. Yeah, nice chip though. As if you're chipping around a big green. B-Dog goes on a run here on the toughest stretch on the course. These holes look innocuous, but are the undoing of most mid-handicappers around this course. What I take out of these holes is that these plans will never go perfectly. But even if they do not, people overestimate the impact on their score in the moment. The round is not over. Meltdown FOMO mode must be nipped in the bud. Keep plotting your way around the course. Nothing in golf is perfect, ever. Great strike, bad boy. Great strike. Great strike, little bit fadey. Little fader for McFaderson. It's gonna be fine up there. That's good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay? It's safe. It's dry. Get up. Get up. So players, this is when you start thinking about your shot. You're walking up, we're recessing. Okay, we're gonna be pitching straight up into the slope. Probably a little right to left. -er. More than likely, it's into the grain, so it's gonna hold up. We can probably be a bit more aggressive. We can either land it short and let it roll up, or we can pitch it further. Now is the time to decide. Look at the lie. Uh, it's okay lie, not, not spectacular. So we might have to You'll be able to get it up enough distance to come land it up here. I believe B-Dog is not striking his wedge around the green solidly enough in the panty. His 60 degree wedge has never run out so much. Solidly struck 60 degree chip shots should never run out 10 or more yards. We will work on it. If you're trying to break 90 or 100, it's very valuable to understand the line zero system. What club would you get off the tee to a place that makes the hole easier? A 360 yard par four is actually only 200 yard par four after you hit a 160 yard tee shot. A 178 yard par three is really just a 30 yard par three after your tee shot is in the fairway, just short of the green. That's the last time you wear those shorts, eh? Why? They're such grandpa shorts. They're like, they're, they're not, like the hat's a nice color. Yeah. It's like baby blue. I don't know what they did with those shorts, but they are terrible. They don't match anything. Are you saying they're not nice? You no, dude, they, ma they match nothing. I like my shorts. Have you seen you some like of your old previous man. videos? You Just like because an... you got like a nice dress code now, 
You look like... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. How can you wear such nice water player gear with a crap colored short? <laughs> Trying to advertise, this is marketing 101 here. Well, it looks like marketing 93. Every time. What a far. Dude, you're back on tour. What a strike. Best of the day. Best of the day. Oh, what a striker. Stop a striker, and think man. for 10 Mississippis. Beauty. Remember, player. If you're trying to break 90, you can either add one stroke to the par of every hole, or understand that after your tee shot, you're line zero. <laughs> oh man, it would have been a sensual booty. <laughs> what a good strike, man. I wish I could hit a seven like that. Beauty. If it's a nice, uh, play it twice. That's a worker. Might have a longer wedge in, but that's good. Perfect. Potential AT players screw up one key area. They stop thinking on too many shots and on too many holes in a round. It's either because of Oof, BDE, lucky. FOMO, YOLO, or dogs. The 100 plus golfer lacks a plan in. firstly, but then when they get a plan, they lack the commitment to stick to the plan for 18 holes without FOMOing their way into oblivion. Oh, he's given that a whack. What a whack. Both groups of golfers can do better if they stop and think for 10 Mississippis. No, you don't multiply 90 shots by 10 seconds and tell me that will add 15 minutes to the round. That's for Muhus, Mormish, and Matrix dwellers. You do all the thinking on the walk up to your ball. You do it in your pre-shot routine. When you begin to think, it will soon become a very quick process as you practice your thinking. Thinking at the correct time in golf is a discipline that must be practiced. You can practice your strategizing by slowing your thinking in real life off the course by being less impulsive. We bring our real life to the course, so practice it daily. We can also live vicariously through our golf. If you want to take hero shots, take them in real life away from the course first in your daily life. Then you have permission to take them on the course. Until then, there are no hero shots, only stupid shots. Overall, B-Dog played nicely and his striking is getting better. He hits the driving range once per week to hit some iron shots and wedges only. We will introduce a 5-wood into his game soon to up his distance off the tee as we move back toward the low 80s. We'll do some more short game practice to stop the 60 degree rolling out so much. We will focus on quality of strike. We'll do some putting work to get him back to his natural stroke so he will lose the anxiety and be more laid back on the putts. 